Yay! <laughs> that was loud. Uh, super happy to be here to kick off this uh, most functional city in the world. Uh, build it with us, reverse pitching slot. And uh, my name is Hanna Nimkatz. As was mentioned, I'm leading the IoT program at Forum Virium Helsinki, which is a smart city innovation unit fully owned by the city of Helsinki. And we are going to be using this slot to uh, introduce to you to all the opportunities that we uh, in Forum Virium Helsinki, as well as our partners, there is no slides in Helsinki the uh, Region Environmental Services and Aalto University are providing to all of you data and IoT research. So, uh, I guess I'm not seeing the slides correctly. Everything functioning okay. So, being fully owned by the city of Helsinki, we are really thrilled to help Helsinki advance in becoming the most functional city in the world. And uh, as many of you maybe know, the uh, city of Helsinki strategy sets us with very ambitious targets, uh, both regarding the environmental uh, targets, regarding the carbon, cutting down the carbon emissions, but also in general in uh, making the city uh, functional and uh, pleasant living environment for both the citizens but also businesses and, and visitors of the city of Helsinki. And we cannot of course do this all alone, so that's why we are happy to be there in this reverse pitching slot to engage all of you and hope to uh, show, showcase some of the examples that we hope that you can utilize when you help us and help Helsinki to become the most functional city in the world. Uh, for uh, our IoT program that I'm leading, this means taking away all kinds of hindrances, in, uh, from <laughs> hindrances from getting started with IoT, whether it's uh, engaging uh, different stakeholders and players to ensure connectivity solutions so that we can get started with uh, LoRa or, or uh, 5G, for example, as, as early on as possible but also doing uh, a lot of R&D activities regarding software, uh, concept management solutions, and so forth. We have also set up uh, Vekot Inversta's IoT uh, uh, hack lab for, for the city and especially companies to utilize. And of course, uh, one proven way to speed experimentations with IoT is funding. And that's why I'm very happy to be here with my colleague Kaisa Sibelius to tell you about the Synchronicity Open Call. And this is really a, a shout out and, and a great opportunity to all of you SMEs that have a pre-tested IoT solution that, is, that you are looking into scaling to European cities. And um, you can, of course, get started as an SME alone and advance on that, and you can get maximum of 100,000 euros. But if you build a consortium where you have a bigger company, a larger company, or a city, for example, as a partner, you can get up to 3,000k. And this is really for all kinds of solutions for renewing the way cities are collecting, utilizing, sharing data, but also uh, for other kinds of IoT-related solutions that make cities smarter. And uh, like mentioned, you can really use it as a C uh, SME alone or as a larger entity. And for the, the topics that we are looking solutions for, you can see that they are all very, very much uh, the big urban challenges that we are trying to solve globally. And the cities involved in this project are just like Helsinki, very ambitious in taking a big role in, in uh, solving this. So, uh, issues with you. And today uh, we will be telling about two of these uh, challenges a bit more in detail, but if you are interested in solving uh, any of them or going for the open theme, more disruptive innovations, please come and have a talk with us and we, we can help you further with that as well. So a little bit about the environment and the well-being challenge. Uh, many cities today uh, are really looking into monitoring their environments in real time. I think there are many really uh, great cases already here in, in, one, in the stands to be seen already today. 
But at the same time, uh, companies are really looking into this real-time environmental data as well to fuel their solutions. And this is an issue we would like to solve together with the companies taking part in this open call. And uh, of course, for some of the risk groups, uh, air quality, for example, has a very direct link with our well-being. And uh, there are quite big, impressive numbers here that uh, what kind of risks this uh, the bad air quality can, can have on us and if we can either uh, uh, have an impact on reducing or <laughs> improving the air quality or reducing the, the risk and the contact with, with air when it is of uh, worse quality, uh, we can have quite big uh, impact on people's health and therefore also healthcare costs. If we give a bit more concrete examples of, of the solutions we might be looking for, uh, they can be about raising awareness, so collecting data so that we can know how our environment is actually doing at the moment. Uh, they can be about automation, so uh, uh, connecting automated homes and, and buildings and the, the ventilation systems, for example, to react on the situations where the air quality is poor. Uh, they can be also about behavior change, so we can actually uh, simulate and, and maybe forecast situations where, where we might end up with uh, poor air quality and try to get people work around a bit differently. Or it could be any other idea that could bring efficiency to the city operations. Now, guys, I will tell more about yeah. the other team. Okay, good afternoon for me, my half as well. So, the other team is uh, sustainable mobility, uh, and they maybe these two uh, challenges are a little bit overlap. That uh, you can choose that where your solution could be the uh, um, suit uh, best. So, but uh, we are looking for solutions that service uh, which are related to Mars, as um, Mars is the mobility as a service. And it means that it's uh, gathered together a different kind of um, uh, transportation solutions, public or, or private. And this is quite a um, new phenomenon. In, and, and in Finland, it's, we have been a little bit uh, further than in the other places. And the other one is... Um, in, um, oh, just a moment. What? Okay, so... And, and the other... other the, team is, is that uh, uh, non-motorized uh, traffic in the cities. And here is uh, some, uh, some examples that what, what these kind of uh, these ideas could, can be. We, are, uh, we don't actually looking for precisely these, but these are some, something uh, like uh, inspiration that what it might be. Okay, and then funding. Uh, as Hannah said, we are giving money, money for, uh, for these good ideas. And for the SME, who are the main target group for these, uh, it's, it's up to 100,000 euros per company. And if there is a group of uh, companies, consortium, it's going to be uh, 300,000 euros if there is uh, three or more uh, participants in this group. And of course, 200,000 if there is a, two partners. And it's, it's also include uh, piloting period. It's, it's a, a core thing in this project that these uh, solutions will be tested in Europe. Uh, these are the uh, cities that uh, are involved in this project. It's an, you can choose Holland or uh, Switzerland or Belgium, as, um, of course Helsinki, or then in Manchester, or Ma Milan, or Porto in Portugal, or Santander in Spain, or you can invite the new cities. But one of these must be in, a, in, a, in the testing pilot city. And then, a few examples of what kinds of sensors are available at the moment in the city or in Helsinki, so there is uh, electric vehicle, uh, vehicles uh, charging points, for example, or sensors about air quality and uh, 
noise. And, and also you can use those uh, um, uh, uh, displays, interactive displays, which are located around the city center. But this is just a part, these are just the examples. Okay, and then how this project proceeds. The open call is not started yet. It will start in the 1st of June. And uh, before that, we are going to have a workshops and info sessions regarding those applying process and, and more detailed uh, requirements what we have. And then there is a three uh, months time to, to prepare the application. And, and, and then in the end of the year, in the October, November, we are going to select those companies and, and the piloting will start approximately in February and, and can last until October next year. Okay, we have also stand there. It's in the, in the tent, in the behind of this, this um, um, uh, place and, and you can come to with us, and if you uh, leave your business card, you can win your own small computer, and you can make your own uh, solutions or little kind of um, sensors. So come to visit us and, and win your own microbit kit. Okay, and, and here are some uh, web pages and email addresses that you can get more information about this call. Okay, but I think that there will be other, other this, this kind of calls as well, but thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Hannah and Keza. Thank you very much. So literally, there's so much happening out there, and the city needs your involvement in making that happen. Okay, I have a second reverse pitch. Please welcome on stage Miko Lindholm from HSY. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So, I come from HSY, and maybe the locals know what it is, but for those who don't know, so I took our main product with me. It's this, the best tap water in the world. So, HSY is a company owned by the capital area cities, Helsinki, Espoo, Vantaa, and Kauninainen. And we provide clean water, and we also clean your wastewaters. <clears throat> then we collect solid waste from housing waste from something like 80,000 points around the capital area. And we also collect some regional statistics and data and publish a number of reports. So there are more than a million people using our services every day and we are the biggest water service and waste service provider in Finland. So here are some numbers about our infrastructure. So we have four big water treatment plants, 12 water towers, pumping stations, 500 or maybe even 800, I can't recall the exact number, and more than 8,000 kilometers of water pipes digged into the ground during the last 100 years or so. On the waste management side, yes, we collect waste from <clears throat> housing waste from 80,000 points weekly. We have five large waste collection stations, sortie stations for the locals, and also one large waste handling site for processing bio waste and <clears throat> toxic waste and, and all special kind of products. We also do air quality monitoring in the capital area, 12 air quality monitoring stations around the city. And yes, about IoT. So I come from the IT department, so I like to think that IoT should be like any IT environment, vendor and <coughs> device independent. So as standard and generic as possible. And that's what we're trying to build here. 
So we have built now a test environment, which maybe grows into a production environment one day. So we have a LoRa network, <clears throat> a LoRa gateways connected to data lake in the cloud. So we can collect data <clears throat> from any LoRa enabled device, and then it can be used by, by any kind of application for any purpose. And you see the <clears throat> rounded rectangle there, so that's, if you want to build an <coughs> IoT application for us, that's all you need. You need the devices or sensors and then some kind of user interface or uh, analyzing application for protecting the data, but we provide everything in between. So, if this is reverse patching, so I try to tell you that you should sell us something, which is a bit strange, but so. We want to accelerate the development of smart city services, and we provide this platform for test use for interested parties. So if you have a good idea or vision how it should be, how the smart city solutions should be done, so please come forward and tell us. So maybe we could have it in our, <coughs> our pilot environment, and you can test it out there. Also, because this environment is totally generic, so you can combine data from different sources, different sensors. So it, you don't need to be <coughs> restricted only to our data, but any data within the city service, energy, air quality, weather, traffic, whatever, what comes to your mind. And also in the future, we, as I said already, we will expand the platforms to support other networks. LoRa was just an easy way to start, but of course 5G will be come. And then we will have complete device management functions and more intelligent data storage operations. So this is kind of intelligent infrastructure for the future smart city. So if you have a vision, here is the platform. Thank you. Uh, I will be available at the uh, Forum Virium stand after this if somebody wants to meet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miko. So as you see, there's tons and tons of opportunities. I am going to welcome again from Forum Virium Helsinki, Ula Tikanen, who will tell us more about her reverse pitch. Ula? Yeah. This is the one? So hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Mulla Tikkanen, and I'm from Forum Virium Helsinki, as mentioned. Um, I'm very excited to be here and even more excited about our project. Uh, but before starting about the project, I would like to ask you, how did you come here today? By taxi? Yes? Well, let me tell you, it's so last season. <laughs> And hopefully, next time you come here, you're able to take a self-driving minibus. So uh, we, in this fabulous project, are bringing self-driving minibuses on the streets across Europe by 2020. So what exactly is Fabulous? Fabulous is a three-year project, eight million project, of which 5.5 million will be distributed to you, being the suppliers. So we are procuring the operators' operations of an automated bus line, and we are looking for all-inclusive solution, including hardware, software, and the fleet. We are six European cities, who are the procurers. And the funding comes from the European Commission Research and Innovation Program. So, did it go? Yeah. So what do we need now? We want the proof of concept for the management of automated fleets as part of public transport. We know that the timing now is right, and we see that the market is mature enough. The most important thing 
is that cities really need to start preparing for automated vehicles because they are coming and they are coming fast. So this we know from the previous experience already. And what do you expect to have by the end of the project? And what do we have to offer? For the cities, we want to have a demonstration of a robot bus service as part of the public transport system. Then for you, we are offering the first reference and a more open market and also lots of interested customers in the form of the procuring cities and the follower cities. So why then piloting on open streets by 2020? We want to show that the solution can support diverse use cases in urban environment and also to scale up. We also want to prove that companies can manage real-life operations and showcase their solutions. And then we want to validate the solutions with the relevant stakeholders. So what's next? Um, this year, in September, we will be launching the request for tenders. Put that in your calendar. 2019, we will have the solution phase together with prototyping. And by 2020, we will have the pilots on streets. Please follow us. Find our website on fabulous.eu. Uh, we are on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And join us, join our fabulous team and help us bring the buses on streets by 2020. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Yula. So there's transportation being completely taken over by the Internet of Things. And who knows, next year, you, well, not next year, in the next few years, you might come to this event in this automated vehicle. Okay, last reverse pitch from Alto University. I have Yanni, Yanni Pekka. Yanni, please join me on the stage. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Jani Pekka Jokinen. I'm a researcher in the Living Lab Bus project in Aalto University. Living Lab Bus, shortly as LLB, is a research and development project which has already created open innovation and test platform in the electric buses. And this Buses are provided by Finnish company Linker and the buses are operated by the Helsinki region transport. And there are many companies also participating in the Living Lab bus project and new technology and service developers are welcome to participate. So this invitation is tightly related to our main goal, which is to enable and support faster development of mobility services through a concrete open test environment in a real public transport context. So, for companies, the platform uh, offers open platform for developing and testing solutions and enabling quick prototyping and validation of solutions with real buses and passengers. The platform facilitates uh, versatile date, real-time data collection and feedback collection 
and information exchange. And this uh, enable co-development in the innovation ecosystem of companies and research organizations. Currently, uh, there are four buses uh, uh, installed in the platform, and the buses are running on lines 23 and 55 in Helsinki. And in addition, VTT provides test buses for prototyping. And this picture uh, shows the technical overview of the platform and presents different ways to utilize the offering. Uh, firstly, the buses collect real-time data with sensors, and this data is uh, available for service developers through APIs. And secondly, uh, technology providers can develop and test their new solutions and technologies in the buses. And thirdly, uh, service providers can util utilize the data in their services, which can be delivered uh, by mobile channels, bus displays, and other systems. <laughs> Okay, and uh, here is uh, some photos of the existing vehicle systems in the buses. On the left side, there is a sensor hub, uh, and then there is in-vehicle computer, and bus displays are currently located uh, in the front side of the buses, just behind the driver. And on the right-hand side, there is Foreca census, which measures air quality and uh, road weather. Okay, so uh, my main message today for you is that the LLB uh, platform is open for new solutions, which can be related for example, in bus interior design, passenger services, environmental monitoring, uh, sensor and IoT data, and technology testing and validation. But these are just examples. Uh, your solutions can be something very different and still relevant. Okay, and... <laughs> Here is uh, currently participating research organizations, companies, and public organizations. VTT coordinates the project, and Linker provides electric buses which are operated by Helsinki Region Transport. And there are already many collaborating companies, but new ideas and users are more than welcome. So thank you for your interest. And more <coughs> information you can find from the website livinglabbus.fi. And today you can come to discuss with me or contact by email. Thank you. <laughs>